The rising cost of living in the British metropolis London is forcing many families to move away. And that has consequences. For St. Dominic's Catholic Primary School, for example, the start of summer vacation last week was also the end and the final one at that. The North London Primary School has closed its doors forever. The remaining children, a few dozen of them, are sent to other schools in the area. And the reason for the closure is the lack of children. The school has places for 210 children, but recently only 121 places were filled, and this has an impact on finances. School receive money from the state based on the number of children who are educated there. A school loses around £4,000 for every child who moves out of the neighborhood and deregistered. In the end, there simply wasn't enough money to keep the institution afloat. In the spring, St. Dominic's principals even wondered if they would be able to keep paying the electricity and gas bills. It is with great regret that we have decided to close the school on August 31st in 2023, is what the school board announced in April. And St. Dominic's is not the only school with this problem. Across London, principals are complaining about ever-widening gaps in their desks. In the township of Hackney, to the east of the city, a total of 634 places are vacant, up from just 10 years ago. The borough government is considering closing six primary schools or merging them with other institutions. In the Southwark di district, south of the Thames, as many as 16 primary schools could soon close. And London communities are warning of a bigger crisis. The state of emergency has several causes. It's a combination of high house prices, declining birth rate, pandemic and Brexit. Living in the British capital has always been more expensive, yeah, I can tell. But for many, it's becoming increasingly unaffordable. The lack of affordable housing has been a growing problem for many years, particularly for younger Londoners. And the Financial Times recently calculated that 25 to 39-year-olds have to spend an average of 36% of their net income on their housing costs. 30 years ago, it was half as much. So more and more younger people are being driven out of London, moving away to cheaper places in, in southern England and that along with their children. Families have moved out of our quarters because they can't afford the rent, is what Principal Helen Connor, that, who runs a school in Camden, told the BBC. There just aren't enough children in our district anymore. The pandemic has also played its part in the exodus. In search of more space, many people who can afford have turned their backs on urban life and moved to more rural areas looking for a more spacious house, maybe a house with a garden. And the expense of life in London, including the high cost of childcare, has another consequence. More and more young people are choosing not to have children. Between 2012 and 2021, the birth rate in the capital fell by 17%. And this will have a further impact on the demand for primary school places. That was written by London Councils, which represents all London boroughs in January. They assume that there will be an overall decline of 7.6% in new school enrollments by 2026. And that corresponds to about 243 fewer school classes. And finally, there's Brexit. Among the tens of thousands of European Londoners who have returned to their home countries following Brexit, many are families with young children. There is no reliable figure on how many, but school leaders say a significant number of EU families deregistered their children in the years following the 2016 vote. Most important, however, remains the crisis of soaring cost of living, particularly in the more central boroughs. These threatened to become a child-free zone. That was said by Catherine Hill of a 4 in 10 campaign that fights child poverty in the metropolis. And Munira Wilson, education spokesperson for the Liberal Democrats, is calling for concrete action by the Westminster government to stop this happening. The government must get the problem under control before it's too late, she said. And Philip Glenville, mayor of Hackney Borough, also believes that intervention from the top down is essential. We need real investment in council housing. We need also to align benefits with actual housing costs and we need to put a cap on galloping rents, he said. 
A city unaffordable for families would also have consequences beyond the schools. Urban planners have found that urban spaces tailored for children also work better for adults. If you take the perspective of a three or 10 year old child, you have a completely different idea of what a good city is. That is what uh, US architecture critic Alexandra Lang told the Financial Times and a city designed around the needs of children enables a far more diverse population to live, work and play there. And so there is a major problem. I mean, when I was living in London, it wasn't cheap either, I can tell you. And uh, I must say, I didn't want to be that far out, but I still uh, almost spent 50% of my income for, for the rent. So housing in, in London was always a really bad thing. But if that continues to happen, this will be a very different London in the future. But if you're interested in more videos about UK politics or Brexit, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.